Let me say it's wonderful to be here. We had an incredible day at the Truman Library and um, getting to spend a little time with Bob Carey, one of the great American heroes and a Congressional Medal of Honor winner. And there was a photograph at the Truman Library where Truman was with him giving the Medal of Honor to um, a soldier and said, I'd rather be doing this than do being president to be to see a real American hero like that. And right after we heard about that photograph and I was looking at it, walked in to the, by the gift shop and was looking at the Thomas Hart Benton mural, which is so fantastic of the opening of the West, and saw the American flag at half mass. And I asked, and it, the city of Kansas City, it's um, Sergeant First Class Charles M. Sedell of, of Weston, Missouri, who was just killed in Afghanistan. And it kind of catches you up short when you see the flag at half mass and realize your community here is honoring um, Sergeant um, Weston in, in, in that kind of way, particularly when tonight we're talking about military affairs. One of the first things I learned in museum business is think about people. Don't talk about Korea as figures of dead because you lose the intimacy of the human being. And, and, uh, and it, I just wanted to kind of say that today. It was a very kind of special moment there at the library. Um, President Truman, as you all know, I mean, you're all here with the Truman aficionados of one way or another, you wouldn't be here. But, you know, as he said, the whole universe fell on his shoulders when Franklin Roosevelt died, the moon and the stars. He had to assume this larger than life role of FDR, the whole country mourned Roosevelt's death. And he had two wars to win, um, one in, against Japan and one against Germany. Only two weeks he's in office and Hitler gets, um, killed in his bunker in Europe, and you have Truman having to scramble both to create the United Nations as the lasting legacy that for FDR, which he's really the father of the UN in many ways, Truman, the Truman administration continuing Roosevelt policies, then has Potsdam, then he has to, uh, we win VE Day, then he has, you know, VJ Day and has the controversial decision of dropping uh, the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and he is a commander-in-chief who wins World War II. He's part of the Roosevelt legacy as a successful commander-in-chief of wrapping up World War II, making some big, bold decisions. But we tend to talk about Truman as a Cold War president. And obviously, as Abraham Harriman once said, everybody wanted to come back to the United States after World War II and, you know, and go either to college or go spend time with their family, go back to the farms in Kansas or Missouri or, or the cities in the East or the West. And nobody was looking forward to making a boogeyman out of the Soviet Union. They were our ally. Uncle Joe Stalin had, had his face on Time Magazine cover. But events started unfolding and Truman started feeling that we were kissing up to the Russians too much. And this kind of attitude was permeating in our government. James Forrestal was very worried about, the, about Russia. George Kennan famously writes the long telegram in 1946, warning about Soviet expansionism. Forget the communist game. Think of the Soviet Union as a country that just wants to keep expanding. And after all, one of the reasons Truman ordered the bomb was to stop the Soviets declared war late on Japan as a way to expand into Asia, they had already had control of Eastern Europe, we were, and, and, and nobody knew for sure what Roosevelt had said at Yalta. So the stage of tension starts getting set, and a big moment occurred here in Missouri, and we're all staying at a hotel right down, or only blocks from here, you see the statue of Winston Churchill in Kansas City, which is so appropriate because his coming to this state and giving the Fulton, Missouri, Iron Curtain speech was, was a major moment because it was no longer just a Forrestal or a Kennan worrying about the Soviet threat. Winston Churchill is warning us about it. And Truman heard that loud and clear and starts a whole series of measures to both do defense reorganization, to get America on a permanent wartime footing, and to win this war against a new threat, the, the to Soviet totalitarianism. We now rank Harry Truman as historians number five, usually. He comes behind Lincoln, Washington, Franklin Roosevelt, Theodore Roosevelt, and Harry Truman number five. And he's that ranked that high 
largely in my, in my view because of the way he astutely handled foreign policy um, between 1945 and 1952.